If you grew up watching Transformers and dreamed of owning one someday, you probably assumed it would stay a fantasy. But that idea is no longer completely fictional. In Japan, Tsubame Industries has built something called Arcax, a 4.5 meter tall piloted humanoid robot that a human can actually climb into and operate. And yes, this is a real product with a real price tag. In fact, in late 2025, it was officially demonstrated to the world at a major robotics expo. Depending on configuration and customization, it reportedly cost around $3 million. But for that money, you're not buying autonomy, weapons, or AI. Instead, you're buying something far stranger. A machine intentionally built around two very specific modes of operation with customization, aesthetics, and structural reliability woven into its core. Buyers can even personalize features and exterior colors directly on the company's website. At the same time, during the four-day exhibition in early December, more than 600 industrial and humanoid robot makers displayed their latest products. Yet, Tsubame's piloted ARCAX stood out as one of the most iconic demonstrations of what giant robots could look like when reality finally mirrors fiction. Arcax is built around two modes of operation, and understanding those modes explains almost every design decision behind the machine. The first is robot mode. In this configuration, Arcax behaves like a stationary or slow-moving humanoid platform. All 26 joints are active, including arms, hands, torso, waist, and upper body articulation. The robot can manipulate objects, rotate its torso, adjust posture, and precisely position its limbs. However, movement speed is intentionally slow, kept at roughly 2 km per hour. This is not a limitation of engineering capability, rather it is a conscious choice. At this scale and mass, speed introduces risk, so robot mode prioritizes control, stability, and predictability over spectacle. The second is vehicle mode, and its purpose is purely practical, relocation. In this mode, the arms fold inward. The robot switches to front wheel steering with rear wheel drive. The top speed increases to around 10 kilometers an hour. Crucially, there is no attempt to simulate walking. Arcax does not pretend to stride like a human. Wheels were chosen because walking at this size dramatically increases mechanical complexity, cost, and failure points. Large bipedal robots suffer from balance instability, actuator stress, and catastrophic fall risk, and Arcax deliberately avoids all of that. That single decision, separating manipulation from movement, is what makes Arcax far more functional than it first appears. It preserves the humanoid form where it matters most, in the upper body, while abandoning unnecessary realism and locomotion. It's not trying to fool anyone into thinking it's human. Instead, it's trying to work reliably. This design philosophy didn't appear out of nowhere. Before Arcax existed, the same core team was involved in building Kiritas, unveiled in 2012. Curitas became globally famous as the first robot that a person could actually sit inside and control. From the beginning, it was inspired by mecha anime and was openly described as an art-driven project, not a practical industrial machine. It was loud, aggressive, visually striking, and intentionally theatrical. The theatrical identity eventually led to Kiritas being involved in a highly staged robot fight against an American-built machine from Megabots. The event was designed for entertainment, not engineering validation. During the fight, Kiritas suffered significant damage and the entire spectacle highlighted a deeper issue. Kiritas was being judged on criteria it was never designed to meet. It was not built for combat, resilience, or sustained mechanical stress. That experience mattered. Arcax emerged from that lesson, but under a new name, a new structure, and a new mindset. The team reorganized as Subame Industries and made a clear decision to start fresh.
This time, the goal was not spectacle. Instead, it was repeatable operation, predictable behavior, and operator safety. One of the most unexpected aspects of ARCAX is that it is not autonomous. It is not remotely piloted by default. Rather, it is designed from the ground up for onboard human operation. To pilot ARCAX, the operator opens a multi panel hatch integrated into the torso, climbs inside, and sits in a fixed cockpit seat. Designing this hatch was a serious engineering challenge because opening large structural panels risks weakening the frame, especially in a machine that changes posture and mode. So, the solution was a synchronized, linked mechanism that moves all panels together in a controlled, predictable motion. Nothing opens freely, nothing flexes unpredictably. Inside, the cockpit feels closer to construction machinery than science fiction. There are two joysticks, two pedals, physical switches, and a touch panel. During development, the team built a full one to one cockpit mock up and iterated repeatedly, adjusting control placement down to millimeter precision. At this scale, Ergonomics are not about comfort, they are about preventing operator error. A misplaced control could result in damage to the machine or serious injury. Vision is handled through nine external cameras feeding four internal displays. Front, rear, left, and right views are always available, while the system dynamically prioritizes camera feeds based on movement direction and joint activity. Alongside live video, the displays show speed, body tilt, battery status, and joint diagnostics in real time. As a result, the operator is never flying blind. One of the most genuinely surprising features is force feedback. When ARCAX grips an object, resistance is transmitted back through the controls. This matters because without force feedback, Operating a three and a half ton humanoid robot would be guesswork. With it, fine manipulation becomes possible instead of dangerous. The operator can feel when something is slipping, resisting, or about to be crushed. Mechanically, ARCAX has 26 degrees of freedom, including independent movement of arms, hands, torso, and waist, making that safe required extensive 3D collision analysis since every joint can occupy countless positions. Unintended collisions between limbs or structural elements could cause failure. Even routing power and signal cables through moving joints became a major engineering challenge. A single failure could disable an entire limb. Structurally, ARCAX borrows more from construction equipment than experimental robotics. The frame is a welded structure made from iron pipes and steel plates designed to handle shifting loads as posture changes. Despite its size, total weight is kept around 3.5 tons, lighter than many people expect. Exterior panels are made from FRP and finished by craftsmen experienced in robot fabrication. Panels were repeatedly filled, sanded, and reshaped to maintain clean geometry without interfering with joint movement which reinforces the fact that this is sold as a product, not a prototype. Buyers can select exterior colors through the company's website using automotive-grade paints designed for durability and metallic depth. Certain exterior finishes and components can also be specified, making each unit visually distinct. Power comes from a 300-volt DC battery system. This limits continuous runtime but it offers key advantages, reduced noise, lower vibration, simpler mechanical architecture, and finer control compared to combustion engines or large hydraulic systems. When a human is sitting inside the machine, precision matters more than endurance. Safety is treated seriously. Formal risk assessments were conducted under ISO and GIS standards. Emergency stops, speed limits, and continuous system monitoring are built in. ARCAX is not meant to be figured out by the owner. Instead, it is designed to behave the same way every time.
Comparisons are often made to South Korea's Method 2, developed by Hankook Murray Technology. While Method 2 looks similar at a glance, it functions very differently. Method 2 is closer to a power amplifying exoskeleton, with the operator positioned outside the machine and heavy reliance on external support systems. ARCAX, by contrast, is fully on board operated, self contained, and designed as a complete experience. And this leads to the most important point. For clarity, ARCAX is not intended for industrial labor, military deployment, or consumer robotics. It is not designed to replace human workers, operate autonomously in public spaces, or scale into mass production. Its primary use cases today are private ownership, exhibitions, demonstrations, and carefully controlled experimental piloting. Production is extremely limited, both because of cost and the complexity of manufacturing and safety certification. Each unit is effectively built to order. Operation requires trained pilots, controlled environments, and strict safety protocols. ARCAX is not meant for crowd spaces or unsupervised use, and it is not designed to make independent decisions. Battery runtime is limited, with usage focused on short, deliberate operation sessions rather than continuous work. This is where ARCAX separates itself from most humanoid robots being developed today. It does not compete with AI-driven robots designed for automation or labor. Instead, it occupies a different category, a human-in-the-loop piloted machine, closer in philosophy to construction equipment, aircraft, or experimental vehicles than to consumer robotics. And Tsubame Industries has been clear about that from the start. The robot is aimed at a small group of buyers who want the experience of piloting a full-scale humanoid machine even if it means absorbing massive R&D costs with no guaranteed return. That may sound absurd, but early cars, aircraft, and computers began exactly this way. ARCAX isn't about utility, it's about proof. Proof that a piloted humanoid robot can exist as a safe, controllable, repeatable machine. So, the question is this. Would you rather own a fully autonomous humanoid robot that thinks for itself, or a $3 million machine like ARCAX, where you are the intelligence inside the body? Comment your thought below, and if you want the real story behind the world's fastest moving AI breakthroughs, make sure to subscribe to Evolving AI for daily coverage.